guys, what's up? It's Joe Reddy from Reddy's Rides. I'm back here at Montu Motors because guess what? We have a JDM legend for you. This is a 1994 Toyota Celica GT4. Let's talk a little bit of history about this car. So there is a championship that runs in the world. It's called the World Rally Championship. That's where there's many different classes of rally cars and many different speeds, technology, and all that. Well, back in 1994, there was a class called Group A, which Toyota was one of the factories that participated in that particular class. Now, what's interesting is that you had to have, as a manufacturer, you had to have what was called a homologation model. So a homologation model was specifically built so that that car could rally in the World Rally Championship. This 1994 Toyota Celica GT4 is that homologation special. This is one of 2,500 models that had to be built that year. And what's interesting is that this Toyota Celica is like none other. The four means all wheel drive. So underneath the hood, we have a turbocharged intercooled inline four, but to really make the magic work, you get a nice close ratio, slick shifting five speed transmission, but getting the power to the ground is that World Rally Championship requirement of all-wheel drive. Now, there was once upon a time where certain manufacturers participated at the top level in the World Rally Championship with rear-wheel drive cars, but those days are long gone because of the advantage of all-wheel drive. But let's go ahead, dive into this JDM Classic, this Toyota Celica GT4, and really look at, hey, is the Supra the only Toyota that you should be thinking about or dreaming about at night when you're hugging onto your pillow? Right off the bat, 1994, love the design of the Celica. This brings back a lot of memories for me because I was a senior in high school when this car was being built. Not available here in the United States. You could get a standard Celica, not a Celica GT4, but love the round ovalish headlights, very nice design. Up front, this is all stock GT4. You can see the flat black grille, that Toyota badge, very nice and clean with your fog lamps and everything else flat black. Peeking behind all of this is gonna be the intercooler for that turbocharger. Now, when we pop up onto the hood, this has to be, and I, I know Tom gave me a look when I told him this, this has to be probably one of my favorite hoods of all time on any car. This hood was specifically designed with the World Rally Championship in mind for that Group A class. Love all the venting, the heat extractors, the in, uh, intake right there. Very, very nice setup that just gives so much personality. Even on the back side, which Tom will show you as we work our way around, you got those heat extractors, great look. Now, as we drop down, nothing to really write home about. That's a Toyota stock wheel. It's a 16 inch wheel, 205 on the width, and that's a 50 series sidewall, but that is what was being run back then in 1994. They didn't have 20-inch wheels on regular street cars, especially rally cars. But you can see the larger calipers on this GT4, those are specific. So it's not just about the body, it's not just about the all-wheel drive and the engine, it's also about that brake sub. So you're getting larger rotors, larger calipers, underneath the fenders, beefier suspension, thicker anti-roll bars, different control arms. All of this was for the purpose of doing the business in Group A of the World Rally Championship. To me, this Celica has more actual history with Toyota than a Supra, to be honest with you. I think a lot of times people love the Supra. They remember the Supra because of Fast and the Furious. They saw the movie as a kid or as an adult, but the Celica really has a sweet spot, I know, in my heart. But let's continue down the side. So you have your side marker light. That's something specific to the Japanese market. Remember, now that this car is 25 years old, you could contact Montu and, and start the process to bring it over. But black on the mirrors, down low you could see the side sill extension. I really like the way it's kind of flared out here, then it tucks in and then it flares by, back out again. Now, this one has a sunroof and whoever owned this over the years added this extra rear spoiler on the back of the hatch. That is not a stock piece. I love the shape of the rear quarter windows on these Celicas. As we keep working our way back, this is it right here. You thought a Supra was the only Toyota with a big wing? This is the stock wing off of a GT4, specific for what? What'd I say? Homologation. 
functional wing. Look at the angle that's going to help produce downforce on the back of this Celica as it's going through the different stages, the different rounds of the World Rally Championship. One of the famous drivers, Carlos Sainz, won so many championships for Toyota, some of them being in this car. This previous owner added the single outlet exhaust. That's going to give us a little bit better sound, a little bit better performance. But out back, guess what? Stock emblems stayed. Celica, the Toyota badge, and the GT4 badge. A lot of times when it comes to debadging, they take these off. But why don't we go ahead, pop the hood, and see what we're working with power-wise. All right, guys, we got the hood popped on this JDM Legend. What you're looking at, as it says on the top there, that's a two-liter. That's what 2000 stands for. Two-liter inline four turbocharged engine. That is the 3S GTE. What we're looking at horsepower wise, 252 horsepower. And when it comes to what's it being transferred through, that's going to be, like I said, that close ratio five speed transmission going to the all wheel drive, zero to 60. And this was back in 1994, zero to 66.2 seconds, a top speed of 152 miles an hour. And the car weighs about 3,060 pounds. What I love about looking underneath this hood on this particular one is a lot of originality. You can see the turbo right there with the heat shield that says, don't touch, very hot. But this is what you're gonna find is this patina. You know, they call it like, they, in, in that show American Pickers, they call it rusty gold. This car has been unmolested underneath the hood, hasn't been chopped up and modified and everything else, which is something that you wanna see. And when we take it for a spin, you'll see how strong she runs. Very, very impressive. Another thing I also wanna point out is you can see with the GT4, the strut tower brace, how it's gonna help stiffen up the front end of the car and also the Japanese riding there. Just little touches that, hey, if you've always wanted JDM and you wanted to bring it to the United States, you get to have that awesome capability and that unique touch to it. But why don't we go ahead, fire this GT4 up and see what it sounds like. All right, guys, I feel like I've stepped into a time machine and no, this isn't a DeLorean, but this interior is spot on stock. Look at the seats, the fabric, the material. This is the original interior from this Toyota Celica GT4. You can see what they were doing for that time period. Lots of memories. The dash, there's not even a crack in it really. I mean, it's really in great shape. Soft material as well. Even the glove box, I opened that up and I'm like, Look how clean it is inside after 25 years. On the door panels, they put cloth on the back of the door panel. That was something that was extremely popular back during this time period. But I'm telling you right now, the top portion of the door panel is as soft as any new car as you could think of. Five-speed transmission, like I said, very, very short throws. Now, are they as short as what you get today in a lot of high-performance cars? No. But for 1994, this was the business. You got your rubber padded armrests, cup holders. Hey, in a homologation rally car, you have your cup holders. Put those back. Nice clean area in here. Ever seen one of these? This is an ashtray. I'm sure you know what that's for. Now, this one does have the stereo system removed because it had some aftermarket system. Um, and the AC does work. Little tiny cubby here not for cell phones, because I didn't really have those back in 1994, at least one that was small enough to fit in there. And then you have your 12 volt with your cigarette lighter. So if you're gonna have a cigarette lighter, gotta have the ashtray. Seating position though, I'm six feet tall, plenty of headroom even with the um, sunroof. But why don't you come over to the business end, I wanna show you behind the business end of this Celica GT4. All right guys, business end, behind the wheel of this GT4, it has the original Nardi steering wheel, that is a name of high quality steering wheels. And look, no Bluetooth. You can't adjust anything from the steering wheel. It's just a steering wheel. It turns the wheels of the car, the front wheels of the car. You have your speedometer in the center, tachometer that goes up to 7,000 RPM. And then on the right, you got a plethora of gauges, including a boost gauge, coolant gauge, 
and fuel gauge. Right now it's running and this thing, I'm telling you, is purring like a kitty cat. We have a turbo timer for when you shut it off. It allows the engine to run a little bit longer to make sure lubrication has been properly done to that turbo and whatnot. But overall, quite impressed with just how this car is after 25 years. What I wanna show you though, is let's check out underneath that hatch and see how usable it is. All right guys, time to check out underneath the hatch. This is where you'll see how usable this GT4 is. Let me move my backpack out of the way, but very, very clean. The seats actually fold down. And if you're wondering, well, what is this? This is actually a rear strut tower brace that uh, attaches to the top of where you mount the suspension and the shocks. That's gonna not only we stiffen up the front end, but we also stiffen up the rear end. And with that all wheel drive, this thing is gonna handle like none other. But while we get to the best part, let's take this Toyota Celica GT4 for a spin. All right guys, I wanna take us down a little twisty road that I know, just nice and gingerly, nothing too crazy, but just really to enjoy this Toyota Celica GT4. With that all wheel drive, I tell you, the engine is nice and strong. And the gearbox, the throws are, are really great. Even though, like I said, they're not super short, they still, the engagement piece is, is very spot on. I hear the sound of that blow up valve. Just really, really cool. Even from the standpoint that I'm sitting on the right hand side of the car, because this is a JDM car, so seating position is totally different than over here in the United States. But overall, I'm telling you, you can't beat the feedback in this car from the steering wheel. That hydraulic steering, no electric steering rack can mimic that hydraulic steering setup on this vehicle. Feels great. And just the fact that it's just your, everything is so engaging and just so raw. That's the great part of it, is the driving experience is really down to the basics. And that's what's missing from the newer cars is that unique driving experience that you get in this Celica GT4. All right guys, we're gonna do a little run through the gears acceleration, nothing too crazy. First gear, pulling away, here we go. Second gear, on throttle, that boost kicks in. Very nice, the engine in this thing is so strong. On the brakes, really great experience here. Wow, this is wonderful. This is what it's all about. This is what being a car enthusiast is all about. Really nice. The feedback is just phenomenal. And what's crazy is, is that the foot box, there's not a lot of room for big, huge feet. That's for sure. Here we go. This is going to be a fun part here. Really nice. That all-wheel drive keeping us planted, keeping us secure. Feedback from the front end of this car. Look at this. This is wonderful. Nice. I'm so glad to take you on this drive with us, man. It is a blast. But I love the way the car just speaks to you. It allows you to feel exactly what those four tires are doing. Brake pedal feedback was awesome. And you saw shifting from third to fourth, second to third, very smooth, very crisp. Just a wonderful experience to be in a car during this time period that was not available here in the United States. And now to be able to enjoy it, this is this is what it's all about, being a car enthusiast. And that's why Mon2 Motors is really great to help you make your JDM dream come true. And at the end of the day, the car, like I said, it purrs like a, like a kitty cat. I mean, even pulling away here from this stop sign. Look at this, nice. 
but hopefully this gave you a little bit of better understanding of why people like these cars why there's this obsession with this J with these jdm classics and how like i said everybody talks supra give the celica some love especially this homologation model known as the gt4 but we're going to go ahead get back to montu motors and wrap this up so i'll see you in a split second all right guys it's been a wonderful trip down memory lane going back in time with this 1994 Toyota Celica GT4. I definitely gotta thank Sam and Jack at Montu Motors for allowing us access to this. And it really just show that, hey, there are other great cars out there, especially from Toyota, that don't have the name Supra. You can get it, you can get it at a reasonable price, and you have something that's unique, one of 2,500. But if it's things like this you wanna keep seeing on Radies Rise, these JDM legends, Leave a comment in the comment section. If you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit the subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile coming back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radies Rise family. If you wanna help us keep making great content just for you on the channel, click the link in the description. It takes you right to Spreadshirt. Gotta give it up to Big Guns McGee. He wants to fly over to Japan and find his own JDM legend. Wish him well in that endeavor. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.